I recently uh, appeared down in Australia with one of my friends, John Gray, who wrote Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, and he's got us on different planets and all of this. And he's uh, a wonderful guy. We had a great time down there. And I was asked to uh, talk about relationships and to write an article. So I wrote an article um, that I really liked. I called it, uh, Your Soulmate is the Person You Can't Stand. And everybody thought, wow, what kind of a crazy thing is that to say? Because most people, when they talk about they're looking for their soulmate, you know, I finally found my soulmate, and we think alike, and we act alike, and we both like green, and asparagus is our favorite <laughs> vegetable, and he goes to say something, and before he can even say it, I say it already. Oh, my God, we think the same thoughts, and we get up early in the morning, and we both like to meditate, and we both like yoga, and we both eat mushrooms, and we eat them the same way, and he cuts the stems off the same way I cut the stems off. It's just amazing. This is my soulmate. And I always say to those people, you got about three more weeks, okay, in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and this relationship's going to be over <laughs> because this is not your soulmate, okay? I mean, who needs more of what you already are, right? <laughs> that, uh, that you're not looking for a mirror of yourself, if you will. Now, we have a tendency to think that. What do we share in common, all right? And then if we're in common, then I'm going, we're going to finally, I'm going to have a peaceful relationship because we're going to always think the same and act the same and so on. That isn't the way it generally works. See, the reason I say your soulmate is the person you can't stand, and I say that a bit facetiously, but what I'm saying here is that peace, being at peace, is the essence of feeling worthy. It's the essence of manifesting. It's the essence of enlightenment, being at peace. Any moment that you're at peace, you're in an enlightened state. And when people ask, is there a difference between people who are living at a higher level, self-actualizing people, who are at peace, and the rest of us who are not at peace say, no, we all have peaceful thoughts, and so do enlightened people. They have peaceful thoughts. The only difference is that they have nothing else. That's all they have. They don't have all of this other stuff that goes with it, all of the anger, all of the judgment, all of the fears, all of the anxiety, the stuff that we have come to believe is just a part of, uh, uh, of our lives, the self-reproachment, the self-repudiation. We have a tendency to think that this is normal. It's only normal. So along come people in your life who know how to push certain buttons, okay? These people uh, can come in many forms. They can come as in-laws. They can often come, and almost always they come as a spouse. And they can come as your children. And when these people show up in your life, they can take you away from your peace. Almost all of us have somebody in our life that we can never get rid of. You know, it's like uh, Kevin Costner talked about in that Waterworld movie of his. You know, they're like a, a turd that won't flush, you know? <laughs> you keep flushing, you look around, still there. If that's a good image or not, but uh, I always liked that image, you know? <laughs> you keep trying and trying, they're back again, right? <laughs> so uh, we have these people in our lives, and these people show up, and they say something in a certain way, and it doesn't make any difference if somebody else said it, we would just ignore it. All right? But they come along and they say this thing, and boom, off you go. And you're frantic, and you're mad, and you're angry, you're upset, you're worked up, you're feeling unworthy. So these people, to me, are your soulmates, you see. Because what they're teaching you at any given moment in your life is you haven't mastered yourself at this moment. You're not in charge of yourself. Those people who can push your buttons and send you into a frenzy or into an angry space or into a space of self-repudiation are people who are divine masters disguised as manipulative, crass, unconcerned people. <laughs> And rather than being mad at them and being upset with them and saying that they shouldn't be this way, your task ought to be to turn to them and bow and say, I honor you as my teacher. Now that's a hard thing for us to get to, but don't you all have people in your life who are just like that? And you know you're stuck with them. These are people who are not on your path. You know they're not on your path. They're not even on an entrance ramp to your path. <laughs> They're in a different place. They're from a different planet. But nevertheless, they're there with you. And you're sharing the journey with them. 
And it's very interesting. I mean, I have eight children, and uh, my children are the ones that are very good at knowing how to push these buttons. <laughs> I have one daughter particularly, her name is Serena, that can really do this very well. She's real good at it. She's always giving me advice almost every day on, on how to be a better parent. She even said to me one time, she said, I can't believe you actually wrote a book uh, on how to be a better parent. I just can't believe that. This is like she was about nine years old telling me this. You really wrote that? And uh, whenever she gives me this advice, it's like, or she starts going into one of her routines, I find myself, you know, really being challenged, you know. I don't usually turn around and say, I honor you for, you know, I'm usually saying, well, you... <laughs> But nevertheless, there's a part of me that recognizes this, and I also recognize it in uh, my relationship with my wife. And we've been together for a long time, and there are areas where she will say something and I will find myself, and then I'll stop. You see, because essentially, the ego part of us wants us to be right, whereas the higher part of us always wants what? Peace. That's all it ever wants. So it's like you have to really learn, if you're going to feel worthy of having something show up in your life, how to be peaceful. And the way to be peaceful in your life is to, in all of your relationships, when you have a choice to be right or to be kind, to just pick kind, to just choose to be kind at any given moment in your life. You are honoring that higher part of you, you feel peaceful, and you've let go of the ego need which says, wait a minute, you're important. And you have to prove that this other person shouldn't have done that and all of that kind of stuff. But Serena, yeah, I remember her, her telling me, she's great, she would tell me, uh, uh, giving me advice on how to be a parent. One day I just had had it with her. And I said, you know, Serena, I said, it's time for you to stop telling me what kind of a parent to be and stop blaming me for the kind of parent I am and take responsibility yourself for the kind of parent that I am. And she stopped, and she assumed this pose that she always assumes with her hand on her hip, you know, and her knee going up and down real fast. And she said, you want to run that one by me one more time? 